for me, the path to success is littered with small failures along the way. And I guess the best thing that I could say to people is decide where you want to go, where you want to be, where you want to arrive at. And then people will ask me this all the time. Well, how do I know if my goal is big enough? And my answer to them is it should scare you. Don't worry about what the path looks like and how long it takes you to get there. Just worry about the end state and the arrival point. And to me, if you can arrive at that end state and arrival point with more failure underneath your belt, you're gonna be stronger, more capable, and more prepared for whatever it is that you wanna do. I don't know if I'm stuck in the station, but I have felt my entire life as if I'm constantly trying to play catch up or keep up with the people that I was surrounded by. The SEAL community was absolutely everything that I thought it was gonna be, and then so much more. And I was so appreciative of that, and I just tried to absorb as much as I could, and at the end of the day, I just didn't wanna be the anchor holding anybody back. I look at everything that I've done in my life, it's like, yeah, average, maybe a little bit below. But I find so much growth as a person from being in that spot, and then I just see people who are better, and better, and better, and better. I mean, it's hard to describe, right? There's been books written about the flow state. That's nothing new. And I think there's a lot of ways that you can get into that flow state, and that's what it felt like on target often. There'd be chaos going around, but your decision-making process is so crystallized, and you can just bang through decisions that you need to make. So we had been there in Iraq for about just under 30 days, and the night that I got shot, I had no indication leading up to that event that it was gonna go any differently than it had gone the nights before. We were looking for a kidnapping cell. We drove to this particular target. We got the notification that, hey, this is actually the building that we're looking for. So the element split off, isolated and contained the target. When I jumped off the ladder, I was in the shadows. Started walking towards that corner that I was gonna post up on. And the second that I took my eyes off of the window that was illuminated, Literally as I swung my head to look into the window that was not illuminated, I heard rounds starting to crack off. First round out, drove right into my hip. It was sideways, so it missed my femur by about a quarter of an inch. Spun me towards the person that was shooting. The second round hit my belt, traveled down it two or three inches, and copper jacket of the AK-47 round is actually still burned into my belt. Slammed me on the ground, and I went sliding underneath a car. It became almost a mass casualty incident. There was eight Americans that ended up being hurt on that target. You know, even at the highest level, it was the effects that came from that largely were from the fog of war. Got drug out of the courtyard eventually and driven to the green zone. That was it. Started, you know, the medical treatment began from there. Well, the first realization that the wheel was moving, and then the second one was that I was off the bus. That's a place where it's very easy to fall in on yourself. So why shouldn't I just take some pills and have a couple cocktails and just enjoy my life? And I played around with that for a little bit, feeling sorry for myself, and got to the realization that that's the exact opposite of who I should be. It's the exact opposite of who I was, and I didn't want to be done. For me, I like things that are challenging. To really get to a high level, it's based off of failure after failure and trying something and failing and trying something and failing and slowly gaining that experience so you can accomplish things that people don't understand how you're able to do that. So I researched and found that I could go be a BUDS instructor and I ended up working with a ton of guys, like three quarters of the people that I deployed with in 2010 were people that I had put through BUDS. And I was able to, again, have my finger in the community of just driving and molding the clay that is that community through experience, through empowerment, through mentorship. Towards the tail end of that, I went to a training command where I was the operations officer and oversaw all the training that was going on. Throughout that, I also started working for CrossFit and in doing so, started public speaking. It introduced me to Tate Fletcher, who was the person who introduced me to Joe Rogan, who's the person who told me I should start a podcast. Then when I got out of the military, I was introduced to brands that wanted to support me in the things that I wanted to do. So I started skydiving more recreationally, which led me to base jumping. All of those right-hand turns can be drawn back to that night on target. 
and there's just no way that I could have seen that in that night. It's in the rear view mirror now that I look and realize that's probably one of the best things that's ever happened to me. I understand, even though I was not a law enforcement officer, the complexities of operating in a tactical environment. I think it gives me a better understanding of the challenges of their job, so likely a better understanding of the things that I can do to try to help them, to make that community better, to move them farther down the road, to help them evolve, because we all benefit from that. In the environments that I used to work in, failure of equipment could terminate in failure of life. And equipment, just like human beings, it has a threshold. Do me a favor and find that threshold in the training environment as opposed to a real world environment. Because if you can do that and find it in the training environment, what you'll realize is maybe I need another piece of gear. You should never be hindered by your equipment. So anytime that people, in my opinion at least, avoid adversity because the outcome may be failure, they are stunting the evolution of what they can be as a human being. If you could list five things for me that you are scared of, I can give you five things that you will have an immense amount of growth as a human being if you dive headlong into. It's really that simple. We all have things that we know we want to avoid because we want to tailor what we do to our strengths and avoid our weaknesses. And if you want to develop yourself into a no-fail mindset and you want to get into situations where you're not worried about failure, it doesn't come from focusing on your strengths. It comes from focusing on your weaknesses.